Good evening, gentlemen, and happy Easter. What you see before you upon the bench is an Apple II Disc II that has been pillaged and stripped so that you can see all of the meaty innards. Beautiful, isn't it? Um, uh, Big Mess of Wires finally got floppy emus back in stock and um, ordered one. Um, I'm going to try to 3D print an enclosure for it. Or maybe a faceplate that will go in uh, one of the Makita disk drive enclosure and set on top of the two disk 2 units next to the 2E over there. I don't know, do something fun with it. But in any case, um, I bought um, a significant number of fairly inexpensive uh, double sided double density disks and a notch puncher. Um, uh, and um, one of my bucket list items is to have uh, the entire Emon Adventure collection for the Apple II um, with, you know, fancy, nice printed labels and shit like that um, on actual physical media. Uh, so, um, we're going to do that uh, one of these days. But in any case, uh, one thing that I did want to do uh, to help with, like, um, backing up discs and shit like that is... Uh, get these disk drives modificated a little bit and uh, to that end I want to put a switch in them um, so that we can either run it with the see down here I'm sure but down here there's a little snap action switch and if I turn the drive sideways you can see the rest of it right uh, the, the switch is actually down there with those two uh, I guess it's a yellow and a black wire coming out of it, or maybe it's white and black and, and it's just dirty, I don't know, but the, the actual snapperoo up there on top of the switch, see the disc pushes it down there, and then you slide the disc in, and when the right protect notch is open, that thing pops back up into the notch, like so. So if the disc is not right protected, that switch is in the up position, uh, but if you've got it taped off, it pushes the switch down, and um, that's how the disk drive decides whether the disk is right protected or not. Uh, so what I want to do is install a switcheroo so that um, when the switch is in the down position, the switch inside of the disk drive that detects whether the uh, disk is right protected or not works as you'd expect, and then you put it up in the center position and it'll either be um, I guess it'll be, uh, I don't know whether it'll be always right protected or always not right protected because I don't know whether that switch is normally open or normally closed, but it'll be one or the other. And then when you flip it into the upper position, it'll be whatever it's not when it's in the center, you know what I'm saying? So you normally leave it down uh, when you're running normally. But then if you were trying to image a, like an important disk and you didn't want to accidentally like write to it, you could flip it into the always right protected uh, uh, position, or if you wanted to write to a disc that didn't have the notch punched out, you could put it in the other position. And um, I think, I don't want to drill the faceplate of my disc drive, because that would be, that would be sinful um, to destroy a perfectly good disc too, even though they're extremely common still. So I, th I think I'll just, um, I think I'll mount the switch in the back here. Because um, it's, it's easy to reach behind those disk drives and flip it into some position or other. And it's a tactile enough switch that you can tell what position it's in. Um, and I was kind of thinking maybe this would be a little bit more of a, like, a more obvious modification. But I've got these RGB LEDs. And I thought about maybe, um, maybe uh, taking out the red LED and putting the multicolor LED in its place and then maybe trying to rig it up so that um, it would change colors depending on the position of the switch but the, the, see the, the problem is this is a um, double pulse double throw switch that's center off so there's no way to connect a circuit when it's in the center position um, but we could do some kind of some kind of thing with some extra logic where we had some line that was pulled high or low um, when it's in the center position and then when you flipped it into one of the other positions it would pull it to the other
other state. And in that way we'd be able to detect when it was in the center and light a certain color. Um, but that complicates things a little bit. But um, I was thinking I'd just, you know, since it's, a, since, since it's an RGB LED, you know, I was thinking I'd use the red line for the normal disk activity and then the other two to, to indicate whether it was like in permanent right protect or permanent not right protect and then just it would operate as normal when it was when it was in like regular position but I'll do some scribbling we'll think about this uh, yeah and another thing that I want to do um, is uh, I'm not gonna do this right now um, but when my new floppy emu gets here um, I want to make a little board that I can plug both a disk drive and the floppy emu into and then it'll have a switch on it that will um, move the drive select line between the physical disk drive and the floppy emu so that I can um, switch between the regular drive and the floppy emu without uh, plugging and unplugging shit, you know? And if I'm going to go to all that trouble, I might as well have another switch that swaps drive 1 and drive 2 because uh, then I'd be able to put the floppy emu in drive 2 position or drive 1 position um, when it was flipped into the circuit. Uh, which might be useful um, when we're imaging shit. I don't know. I should have thought about this more before I started. Um, Joe says, center, honor the switch. Up and down should be forced right, right open or right protected. Um, that's how I wanted to do it, but it gets a little more complicated that way. But if there's going to have to be external logic anyway, we might be able to do that anyhow. But let me... Um, let me show you what I was thinking. I need a pin here. Okay, so here's a. Um, can you see that? <coughs> yeah, I think you can. So here's a um, double pull switch. Or a double throw single pull switch, whatever. All right, um, which would be like half of one of these, right? Uh, center off. So there's an off position that doesn't connect either of these two. So what I figured I'd do is I'd, I'd come in here, right? And then I'd come out of the other side. And then this would be our actual right protect switch right here, right? And it would come out and go to the regular connector that plugs into the analog board on the disk drive, right? Um, and then I'd take this side of the switch and just splice it right there so that when it, the switch was in the down position um, the right protect switch would be in circuit. Uh, when it's in the center position and nothing's connected um, this would never be connected and when it's in the up position um, this would always be connected. So that wouldn't require any extra um, any extra uh, logic or anything. Um, and if, if I had one of those like four pole slide action type switches, you know, that when it's in the center it connects the center two, and then when it's on the edges it connects the outer ones, um, I could probably do it the way you're talking about without um, without having some e extra chips and shit in there, but I don't know. Um, I don't know that I even need a light, uh, like the, 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 the fancy LED. I don't know. What no, that's just a great big PNP transistor. Well, I thought that was voltage regulator the way it worked. It's Q. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. The. Uh, huh. Alright, so the activity LED is actually running off of 12 volts with a big dropping resistor. Ah. Well, that complicates things a little bit, doesn't it? Perhaps we should just install our switch and quit fucking around. I am not going to modify my shit too much. See, this the, the multicolor LED, the, the 5 volt, or the, the, the red side of it is going to want uh, to run on a different voltage. This, this, this is probably like a 3 volt LED, and this the red section of that's going to be like a... 2.2 volts or something, and I, I, I don't want to. I don't want to replace components on this board. I could probably replace that resistor with a different value that would drop the voltage to the right level for this thing. But <sighs> got to 
keep the mods separate from the thing so the next guy doesn't get fucked up, you know what I'm saying? It's just polite and shit. Oh, I don't want to drill through the sticker. Baloney. What's the worst that can happen? Grand fuckery. That's what. Grand fuckery. How much do you think this will walk since I didn't center punch it? Oh, a few metal shavings won't hurt anything. Shake the metal shavings out. Very good. This is not a good way to do it. Just so you know, should take all the shit out instead of getting metal shavings down into the mechanism. Well, that's not centered at all. Piss. Fuck it. Not the one buried in the cellar. Only one buried in the cellar. Yes, I can I can hear your disappointment now. Post it in the comments. Okay, now I've got to put the computer back together and rejangle everything. Hang on a minute. So we got it booted into DOS 3.3. The switch is in the lower position. I will clear the uh, program memory and I will init hello and try to format this disk in the disk drive. It appears to be working. Okay, this disk should boot now. Very good. Okay, now we will right protect the disk with a piece of electrical tape. Save Foo. Right protected. Very good. Oh shit, now I can't get it out because my tape sucks. Take the tape off. Save Foo. It's saved. Flip the switch up to the upper position. I don't know if that's rate protected or not. Save bar. Rate protected even though it's not. Very good. Flip it up to the top, which should be 
not rate protected even though it is. And it saved it. Very good. Goody Bear. Skippy. Fucking A. Etc. Alright, well I guess that worked.